All right, so let's put this into practice. Um, all right, number six, determine the internal energy of water at 20 PSIA and 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It did not tell us that that is superheated. Um, so I'm going to start at the saturation, the saturated tables. All right, uh, do you see the English units? English units, I'm in appendix two, right? Uh, water, so I, I'm looking at uh, 4E, 5E, 6E, 7E. All right, um, and it didn't tell me if it was saturated or not, so I'm gonna start at 4E or 5E. I'm gonna start at 4E or 5E. In general, I think it's better to start at 5E. In general, I think it's better to start at 5E because it makes sense that if the temperature is larger than your temperature for that pressure, it, it is superheated. All right, but let us, Let's so start either of them, 4E or 5E. Let's start at 4E. Let's go to table 4E, and let's look at a pressure of 20 PSIA and a temperature of 400. Pressure of 20 PSIA, a temperature of 400. All right, so I'm going to my property tables. I'm going to my English units. I'm going to try to find 4E real quickly. I, I, I really should know where Appendix 2 starts. Maybe kind of memorize. It starts right here. It'd be at page 51. Uh, all right, so then I go to 2, 3, 4. All right, 4E. All right, so let me reiterate. I've got a uh, temperature of 400 degrees Fahrenheit, a pressure of 20 PSIA. So for this temperature of 400, well, we go to the next page. Temperature of 400. My P sat is 247. I'm at a P of 20. My pressure is lower. What does that mean? That means superheated. Remember, pressure is kind of the only one that's different. That means superheated. All right, if my pressure is too low, then it is superheated. So if I went to table 4E, it would send me to the superheated. What if I went to table 5E? What if I went to table 5E? Let me reiterate what my pressures and temperatures were. My... Pressure was 20, my temperature 400, my pressure was 20. All right, this T sat is 227, I'm at 400. What happens if my temperature is too high? Superheated. So whether I went to 4E or 5E, it would send me to the superheated table. All right, so I go to table 6E, superheated table. All right, I'm at a PSIA of 20, so that's right here. So I'm looking at I'm looking at this box right here. I'm at a temperature of 400. All right, I'm lucky. Uh, I, it's just listed. No interpolation. What did it ask for? Internal energy. It asked for internal energy. Internal energy. Right there. 1145.1 units BTU per pound mass. And that's it. All right. So this one, the U... 1145.1, got to have units, BTU per pound mass. Not too bad, right? So you see what we did? We started at the saturate, saturated table, 4E or 5E. My pressure was too low at 4E, which tells me it's superheated. Or my temperature was too high for, for 5E, it's, that means superheated. All right, how about this one? Determine the temperature of water at a state of 0.5 MPa uh, and an H of 2890 kilojoules per kilogram. All right, so I see SI units. So I'm in appendix one. I see water. So I'm, I'm at four, five, six, or seven. It doesn't tell me whether it's saturated or not. So I should go to four or five. But uh, I only have pressure. I don't have temperature. I only have pressure, so I actually have to go to table A5. A5, the, uh, sorry, I'm going to start, start at A5, the pressure table for water. So let me start at A5. That's going to be way up here. Let me start at A5. And we are going to use a lot more of these tables later on. They aren't just wasted space here. 
All right, table A5. 0.5 MPA, 0.5 MPA uh, would be 500 kPa, correct? Y'all correct me if I'm wrong here. 0.5 MPA would be 500 kPa. Uh, and so it said that I've got an H, an enthalpy of 2890 enthalpy. So right here, here is my enthalpy of 2890, which is too large. It is not in between 640 and 2748, is it? Right? If it's not in between... If it's not in between uh, these two values, then it then it's not saturated. It's too high. It is superheated. So that would send me to table A6. All right. So I'm at 0.5 MPA right here. This box right here. I'm at an H of 2890. Uh, which one was H? H was this column down here. I would really print these out if I were you. I would. I like to have these on a sheet of paper, have a ruler. We can go through and look, make sure I'm looking at the right columns and the right rows. Uh, I've got a 20, 2890 would be in between those two values. So it's going to be in between these two temperatures. Uh, this first uh, temperature, those are the... the saturated vapor uh, values. These are the saturated vapor values right there. Uh, so in case, uh, and sometimes it will be, in case, if, if you for some reason, let, let's kind of go over here. If for some reason you needed to go in between these two values, it would be in between this temperature and the saturation temperature. You have to flip back to find the saturation temperature. All right, but anyway, it's between these two values I need to interpolate. I need to interpolate. Maybe I could do that on this page. Maybe uh, not. But if I have a value of 2890, it's in between these two. So what temperature in between those would I get? Let's go back and do the interpolation. Now, I like to do top minus bottom over middle minus bottom. Top minus bottom over middle minus bottom. All right. Uh, there's probably easier ways to do that. But I'm going to do 250 over 200 minus what I'm looking for over 200, right? Top minus bottom over middle. Middle is in between, somewhere in between that I'm looking for. All right. So here I'm going to make sure I do top 2961 minus bottom 2855.8. Over middle, middle is what I have, 2890 minus bottom, 2855.8. Here's the main thing, because you could flip both of these equations. You could move some things on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. Make sure that these two correspond with each other. Is that, the, is that the temperature that corresponds with that H? Make sure these correspond with each other. Is that the temperature that corresponds with that one? Is this the temperature that corresponds with that one? And then make sure... Is this the temperature that corresponds with this one? Yeah, yeah. That This is what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find the temperature that corresponds with this H value. All right. So then, you know, multiply this over, divide this over. It's a little bit of, a little bit of math. Get a temperature of 216.3 degrees C. Make sure that makes sense. Make sure that makes sense. First of all, is it between 200 and 250? Yeah. Uh, it's closer to 200. It, does that make sense? Is this value closer to 2855 or closer to 2961? Uh, yeah, it's a little closer to 2855. That's really what interpolation is. You measure how far away from the top and bottom you are, and that's how far away from the top and bottom your other your temperature is is going to be. All right. Let's look at the next one. Let's look at the next one. All right, how about we find the internal energy of compressed liquid water at 80 degrees C and 5 MPA? It, they didn't really have to tell us it was compressed liquid. We could have figured that out ourselves by going to the um, 
prop the saturated saturated tables and finding that this temperature is too high for a pressure of MP, 5 MPa or finding that this pressure is too low for a temperature of 80 degrees C. But anyway, it told us compressed liquid. So it wants to tell us we have two ways to, to find that information. We could uh, go to the compressed liquid table, table A7. All right, this is an SI unit, so it's not A7E, it's, it's just A7. And we could find the, what are we looking for? Internal energy U. We could find the U from the compressed liquid table, these two values right here. So, so let's do A. Let's go to table A7. Temperature of 80 degrees C, pressure of 5 MPa. I'll go to the property tables. I'm going to table A7. And I have a pressure of 5 MPa. And I have a temperature of 80 degrees C. Uh, so there we go. Here, here's my U right here. 333.82 kilojoules per kilogram. 333.82. So let's go right here. Uh, the U from table A7. Table A7, uh, 333.82 kilojoules per kilogram. All right. Uh, but how about me? What if we didn't have that compressed liquid table, maybe, uh, and we just estimated it at the UF at temperature? UF at temperature, right? So I would go to table A4 for... At 80 degrees C, I would not go to table A5 at M, uh, at five, yeah, at five MPa. All right, and I would estimate it to be UF at 80 degrees C. So this, let's go to table A4 uh, and find the U subscript F, the saturated liquid value uh, at 80 degrees C. So go to the property tables. Go to table A4, A4, uh, temperature, here we go, of 80 degrees C, um, the U, that one right there, right, the UF at 80 degrees C, 334.97. So, so if I didn't have table A7, I would have said it's about 334.97. I probably wouldn't put 0.97 because um, it, it's about, no need to, you know, um, put it out to this many decimal places, but I, I, I will. Uh, kilojoules per kilogram. All right, so there is my estimation. See how close we are. What's the error in the second case? And, and different pressures and temperatures will give you different errors. Uh, but what is the error? I'm off by uh, 1 out of the 333.82, right? If you want to find the error, the percent error, right, take the difference over the total value. I'm off by 1 from a, a value that's 333.0034 uh, or 0.34% off. Pretty, pretty close, right? Pretty close. Pretty close. Now, let me show you. U is not UF at the pressure, right? Not at 5 MPa. Let, let's, let's go to table A5. All right, so do not do this. I'm about to X through this. You'll see why. Go to table A5, and what if we had said it was U at 5 MPa? Go to the property tables. Let's go to table A5. And at 5 MPa, which is 5,000 kPa, the UF 1148.1. eleven forty eight This would have been, I would have said, Goodness. 
U is approximately 11. 48.1 kilojoules per kilogram. Do you see that that is nowhere near the actual value? That's why we do not do not use the 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 saturated liquid values at pressures. Use the saturated liquid values at the temperatures because it's more closely related to temperature. More closely related to temperature. All right. And one last thing before I go with, with these saturated vapors not saturated, these superheated vapors and compressed liquids. Uh, uh, what if I, maybe I went to the uh, saturated table and I thought, I thought that it was a um, compressed liquid. You know, maybe I thought it was compressed liquid. What if you go to the compressed liquid table, like let's say maybe you have a pressure of 30 MPA, uh, what if your temperature was, you know, 600 degrees C? If your numbers are nowhere on your table, then it pro you're probably on the wrong table, right? You're probably on the wrong table. Rethink that. Maybe did you, did you get that pressure backwards? You know, maybe your pressure was too uh, low. Um, so, so anyway, if, you, if your numbers are not on here... You probably went to the wrong table. What if you thought it was superheated and, you know, you were here with a temperature of 80 degrees C? You think, oh, well, that's that's nowhere on here. Don't try to do some weird interpolation or anything. Um, if, if your values are not on the property table, then you are probably on the wrong property table. Probably a good sign. Uh, re Start over. Revalue it. See if you missed something. If you're on the wrong table. All right.